Leg exercises for each Brunstrom stage of stroke recovery. Feel free to skip through the timestamps until you get to your stage. Of course, always check with your doctor or therapist before starting any new therapy or exercise routine. Don't forget to subscribe and click that join button to learn more about a channel membership to post stroke. Let's get into it. Stage one, flaccidity. This usually occurs shortly after the stroke happens, and it's marked by sort of a limp hanging, floppy leg. There's low muscle tension and usually little to no movement in the affected side. In this stage, we wanna be focusing on passive range of motion. This is in order to help reestablish that brain body connection after your stroke. Now, for these exercises particularly, I recommend doing them daily, three to five sets of 10 to 15 repetitions, more if you can handle it as long as you're not pushing through any pain or discomfort. So let me show you the three exercises that I recommend doing in this stage. You may need somebody else to help you with them, but I'm gonna show you each of them in a way that I think you will be able to do them by yourself. Now the first is hip external rotation and abduction. So this is where we are lifting the leg out to the side and opening the hip up into external rotation. So the easiest way to do this at home by yourself is probably to sit sort of sideways on the side of a sturdy solid surface. You wanna use your unaffected hand to pick your affected leg up, turn it out to the side and sort of have it resting on that surface. Bring it back down, pull it back up. If you're not able to do this on your own and you have someone else to help you, you can get in a position on your back You'll need somebody to help you bend your legs up. This is now my affected side just to show you for the camera. And then what you would do is have them help you lower your affected leg down so that it's nice and opened up, leg is high, out to the side, abducted, and then bring it back in and then repeat. Now the second exercise is knee flexion and extension. So this is bending the knee and straightening the knee. Now to do this at home on your own, Again, you'll sit sort of sideways on a surface with your affected leg um, closest to that surface. You're going to use your unaffected leg, wrap your foot around your other ankle, and what you're gonna do is help bring that affected leg back, and then use your unaffected leg to help push the leg straight. Now, this of course requires some level of balance to maintain your upright position, um, so just be cautious with that. The last exercise for stage one is ankle movement. So what you're gonna do is you can stay in this similar position and either cross your leg if you're able to get into this position or you can set your leg on that solid sturdy surface. And what you're gonna do is take your unaffected hand and gently push your foot up so that your ankle bends into dorsiflexion and then pull it down. Stage two, spasticity develops. This is when you might notice increased muscle tone in response to quick movements with specific muscle groups in your leg. Often this happens with hip internal rotators and adductors, those that cause the leg to come into midline, as well as knee extensors, those that straighten the knee, and ankle plantar flexors, those that cause the toe to point down, playing a role in foot drop. Spasticity of the knee extensors can also play a role in something called stiff knee gait, which occurs in around 60% of survivors and sometimes can cause that hip circumduction because you can't bend your knee and you're trying to clear your foot. So this section is really important. We need to focus on stretching in this phase. You will want to continue with those passive range of motion exercises from stage one, but add in these stretching exercises as well. You'll wanna do at least three sets of three to five repetitions and holding each stretch for around five seconds each. So the first one is hip external rotation and abduction to fight against the spasticity pulling the leg in. So again, you can come into that similar position that we did in stage one, bringing your leg up, but now the goal is that you're hanging out in this position for about five seconds. The second stretch is a knee flexion stretch. So for this, we're gonna stay in sort of this side facing position. You're gonna use your unaffected leg to wrap around your affected ankle, and you're gonna pull your affected leg back 
as far as you can. Now, if you're able, you can actually reach down with your hand, as long as you're stable enough and you're not gonna lose your balance, to pull that lower leg up a little bit more and get more of a stretch here. The last stretch is an ankle dorsiflexion stretch. So this is where you're gonna stay in this position. You can either cross your leg over here or you can lay it on the surface. And what you're gonna do is push that foot up, bring those toes up into dorsiflexion. You are trying to stretch out uh, the muscles that tend to get spastic and wanna point the toe down. Stage three, spasticity increases. This is the stage where spasticity is at its worst. Even passive range of motion can become difficult due to the increased muscle tightness. So in this stage, we focus on prolonged stretching. A daily prolonged stretching routine is incredibly important for spasticity, not only to help manage it day to day, but also to prevent the formation of contractures. So we focus on the same stretches from stage two, but this time you're gonna do them daily and you're gonna do three to five sets of three to five repetitions, but you are holding for 30 seconds instead of five seconds. So let me show you. Again, we're starting off with that hip external rotation, abduction stretch. So if you wanna get into this position, you can. You'd help um, bring your leg up with your unaffected hand. And then you would just try to sit here and keep that leg open. Again, you can do this in a laying down position on your back, having someone help you um, get your leg into this position. Let me show you here where your leg is gonna come out to the side. And then again, you would just sit here for 30 seconds and let those um, muscles really stretch out. All right, let's go back to our second stretch, which is knee flexion. So again, if you're trying to do this by yourself, you don't have anyone to help, you can take your unaffected leg, wrap it around your affected ankle, and try to bend that leg back and hold that stretch for about 30 seconds. Now that might be difficult depending on how strong your unaffected leg is. You can also use your arm to help bring that leg back and get a little bit of a stretch this way. Now the last stretch is the ankle dorsiflexion stretch. So I'll show you uh, with my leg crossed over here this time. For this one, you're just pulling up by your toes and you're holding that position for 30 seconds. Stage four, spasticity decreases. Thank goodness, in this stage, we start to see spasticity lessen and the return of active movement. Now, stretching is still really important in this stage, and I would recommend that you continue doing the prolonged stretching routine from stage three. However, we are gonna add in some active exercises. I'd recommend going for three to five sets of 10 to 15 repetitions, more if you can handle it. I have got four different exercises for you in this stage. The first is hip flexion and extension. Now I'm gonna show you two different modifications depending on where you are. And the first is in a sideline position. So you're gonna lay down on your side with your affected leg on the top. For this one, you want to bring your leg forward, trying to keep the knee straight, and then bring it back behind you. The second modification, is to actually do this standing up. Now, of course, you will wanna be holding onto something um, stable and sturdy like a kitchen counter, but you can just kick your leg forward and then try to kick your leg back. The second exercise is hip abduction, which is bringing the leg out to the side. Again, I have two modifications, and the first is laying down on our back. This is my affected leg now, just to show you for demonstration for the camera. You're gonna try to slide your leg out to the side, sort of like you're making a snow angel, and then bring it back in. Leg out to the side, and then bring it back in. The second modification is to do this standing up. So again, holding on to something sturdy, and you'll shift your weight, and let's say this is gonna be my affected side. So you're gonna lift your affected leg out to the side, and then back down. All right, the third exercise is knee flexion and extension. So bending and straightening the knee. Again, two modifications for you. For the first one, we're gonna lay down again. This is my affected side. So what you're gonna do is bend the knee up and then fully straighten the leg down, bend it up, 
and fully straighten. Let's go ahead and sit up for the next modification. So for this one, you're gonna try to kick that leg out so that your knee straightens as much as you can get it straightened and then bend it back as far as you can. All right, the last exercise is focused on ankle dorsiflexion. So you're gonna have your feet on the ground. You're gonna try to lift your affected toe up. Now, if you want, you can practice this with both feet. That's perfectly fine. Um, or you can just focus on your affected toe. But you're just gonna try to raise it up, raise it up, raise it up. Stage five, minimal spasticity. Brain signals to the affected limbs are improving, and although spasticity may still be hanging around, it's not impeding active movement nearly as much. So now we get to start strengthening. Now, if you don't have access to gym equipment or different machines for leg strengthening, I would highly recommend you get a pair of cuff weights. This is an easy, accessible way to start adding resistance so that you can really start building strength in your legs again. I'd also recommend starting with a weight that is doable, but also challenging. And this may take a little bit of figuring out on your part to see what's gonna be just right for you. As far as reps and sets go, this is gonna be really variable depending on the amount of weight that you're using for resistance. If you're using lighter weights, you may wanna shoot for somewhere around three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. If you're using heavier weights, you may even wanna shoot for something like five sets of five repetitions. Again, it's just gonna be dependent on where you are. So for these strengthening exercises, we're focused on the same movements that we did in the last stage. So let me show you. The first one is hip flexion and extension. We're gonna be doing this standing up. You're gonna hold on to something sturdy, trying to keep your leg as straight as you can. You're gonna raise that leg up and then bring it back behind you. Now, if your balance is still a little bit off and you need to separate these movements out, you can just do hip flexion, keeping the knee straight back to center, knee straight back to center, and then go into hip extension, leg out behind you, knee straight, come back to center, and back to center. The second exercise is hip abduction. So this is where we're bringing the leg out to the side and then back down, trying to keep that knee nice and straight, out to the side, and back down. The third exercise is knee flexion and extension. So this is where you are raising that leg up, knee is nice and straight, bending it down as far as you can, kicking it out, bending it as far as you can. And the last exercise is ankle dorsiflexion. Now, to really get more of a challenging workout here, I would actually recommend taking that cuff weight and wrapping it around the ball of your foot. And then what you're gonna do is have your foot on the ground, and you're gonna try to raise those toes up against that cuff weight. That can be really challenging, and I actually feel this myself. Stage six, no spasticity, coordination improves. It's really important in this stage that you continue with those strengthening exercises from stage five. However, because coordination is improving in this stage, we really wanna maximize on that and add in a coordination exercise. So this is actually called toe taps or a clock exercise. You are going to stand up for this one and you want to bring your toe out to the front like it's at the 12 o'clock position on a clock, a three o'clock position on the clock. Let me step up here a six o'clock position on the clock, come back, and then a nine o'clock position. So you're actually crossing over midline and you will repeat each of those. Stage seven, typical movement. In this stage, you return to the typical movement that you had before your stroke. And if you get to this stage, I highly recommend implementing a regular strength training regimen. This would mean doing two to three strength training sessions per week. And you really wanna focus on increasing the weight that you're lifting, only if your doctor okays it. Heavy weight lifting has such incredible benefits for our body. You can continue to use cuff weights if you're not able to tolerate heavy weights, but otherwise, I'd recommend moving up to dumbbells or barbells for your leg strengthening exercises. My two favorite leg exercises are squats and deadlifts, and both of these can be done either with dumbbells or a barbell, whatever you have access to.
If you liked this video, you may also like my video on hand exercises for every stage of stroke recovery. And please leave me a comment and let me know what leg exercises have been most helpful for you in your recovery journey. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click that join channel membership button, and if you can, leave us a super thanks to help support what we do. You can become a Patreon member or leave us a one-time donation via PayPal or snail mail. A huge thanks to Heather G, Ryan D, and Modus Nova and our Empowered Tier on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.